Great, so before I get into some of the best practices, I wanted to tell you a little bit about INSEAD. I hope it doesn't seem too much like a, a commercial or advertisement for INSEAD, but uh, if, if you don't know much about us, maybe it would be helpful. So we were actually the first MBA program in Europe uh, back in, 19, in the late 50s, uh, just a few years after the war. Uh, Europe was looking to rebuild. So INSEAD really came into play and in Fontainebleau, France, so if anyone's been uh, to Fontainebleau, there's a beautiful chateau there. It's also one of the largest forests in Europe. And uh, a few of the French kings had that as their hunting ground. But it just also is a place where we decided, I wasn't around then, but when INSEAD decided to, to start a campus. So the first campus was started in the late 1950s. And we had the first uh, MBA, as I said, and also uh, a little bit different, our MBA is 10 months. So we were the first 10 month MBA, so most MBAs are, are two years. And that was another innovation that we had. Uh, George Dorio is our founder. We opened another campus in Singapore in 2000 and a third campus in 2007 in Abu Dhabi. So we really want to have a, a global footprint and uh, we actually welcome students from all over the world. No more than 15% of our students come from any one country. We are very, very happy uh, this year. Uh, for the first time, we're the number one Financial Times Business School, and we're also the highest ROI. Of course, having a 10-month MBA helps because if you have uh, uh, opportunity costs two years uh, being in school for the MBAs, that's often uh, very difficult. But if you have a 10-month MBA and you have high salaries like our students do, then you end up having a nice ROI. So uh, also some other um, uh, statistics, we, we also have uh, high rankings for our executive MBAs and our executive programs. Our, our class is, looks a little bit like this, so uh, the average age is 29, uh, five to six years of work experience, and we have, um, we hope, close to a third this year women. And uh, the interesting thing about INSEAD is we are uh, in, uh, located in uh, countries where English is not necessarily the primary language, but we do have students from around the world, so we have to have a, a, a principal language, so that language in this case is English. Uh, but actually more than 80% of our students do not have English as their native language, so this is actually something that's uh, really, uh, I, I always find impressive, especially as an American who doesn't really speak a lot of languages, living in France now, that's, that's changed, but uh, this is something that um, really makes INSEAD stand out as well. Uh, we do have a diverse student body coming from all over the world. We have a, we have a bit of a large footprint in Europe and also Asia because that's where our, our campuses have been. But we also draw students from uh, many other areas including uh, North America and Latin America and of course also Africa and the Middle East. This is just a quick uh, snapshot of our course. So again, it's uh, 10 months. We have five modules that are two months each. So it's a really intense program. Most MBAs, you stretch that out over two years. What our students do is they start on one of our two campuses where we offer the MBA, in Singapore or Fontainebleau, and they do their core courses. So what our students are learning are all the basics uh, in business in their core, so finance, marketing, strategy, and then what they can do is specialize in different areas when they get into their electives in the third, uh, third through fifth periods. So what this means is uh, that they can have a mini major of sorts, they can uh, look at marketing, they can look at entrepreneurship, and if they start on one of our campuses like Fontainebleau, they can actually move to Singapore once they begin their third period. Or they can go to Kellogg, the Kellogg School, a very, very well-known school at Northwestern University, or the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, which was actually the first business school and the alma mater of an American presidential candidate we won't talk about right now. Um, SEEBS is also um, a, a school in China. It's a China International European or China European International Business School in Shanghai, and that's another place uh, that adds to our uh, footprint in, in Asia. So I'm part of a, a, the Career Development Center team, and it's a team that does three things: we develop talent, we market talent, and we connect talent. So the developing talent is really helping our students understand. Where, uh, where they might want to work and how they will market themselves. We have a, a team of career coaches that works with um, students as they come into the program. And I'm part of the marketing team, which goes out to companies and goes out to the business world and talks about INSEAD talent. And we break out into different areas. So I cover anything 
within what we call the TMT space, tech, media, and telecom, and also startups and small businesses. And then we also have a uh, connecting team, which helps with some of the uh, ways that employers will uh, connect with talent, which I'm going to talk about in a moment here. And that's actually the, uh, the meat of this program, when I want to talk about some of the best practices. So for any of you who are familiar with uh, campus recruiting, this is probably the traditional thing that you may see. So sometimes companies will come to uh, university campuses and do presentations, and they will do interviews, and sometimes they will do career fairs. And these, are, these have been practices that have been in place for a long time. The thing that's changing is that students are millennials now. And this, this idea of millennials it's, it's not necessarily a myth, and it's not necessarily something that's limited just to the U.S. or to Europe. It is a worldwide phenomenon, and we know that because we see a very global footprint here, and we know that this millennial phenomenon. And what does this mean, millennials? So there's a certain age range, there's a certain generation. It's usually those born in the uh, 80s until around the mid-2000s. Um, and what we're seeing there, the, the, so the, the, the middle of the last decade, so what we're seeing there is obviously a big uh, change in terms of their use of technology, their comfort with technology, and the fact that they seem to have a short attention span. So that's maybe why when we do uh, presentations, even at events like this, they're 10 minutes, they're 15 minutes, and we really have to engage them quickly. And this is what we're seeing when, when companies come to campus. We really uh, want them to come in and tell a story and, and, and talk about their organization, but not so much about what you can find on the internet, because the students are so well connected, they know that already. So what you want to do is you want to tell a story. What, what are you doing that's interesting? What, is, what, what are some new innovations that your company is working on? And spend the bulk of your time really for one-on-one -on -one interaction, because this is the this is the connected generation, this is the iPhone generation. They want to know individually What's in it for me, and, and how will I fit in your company? I know it sounds a bit self-centered, but this is what we're this is what we're looking at with this this new generation. Again, it's a global phenomenon. So, uh, spending time with networking, helping them see where they fit within your organization, and one of the best ways to do this is to bring in alumni or bring in people who have similar backgrounds to theirs, who can talk about their experience and and really market your organization. We also do. Uh, one of the things, because our students rack up a lot of air miles when they're with us, they do a lot of traveling and, and traveling around to companies. And uh, we do what we call track visits. So we have students visit companies on site. I just came back from the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, where we had a one week elective called Building Business in Silicon Valley. And there were a, a group of students, about 20 students, who went around to various companies, large companies, small companies, venture capital, uh, law firms uh, to learn about deal structuring. So everything to learn about how to start a business in Silicon Valley. We do the same thing in Israel, we do the same thing in, in China, and also in India. This is, a, this is something that we do globally, but the idea is to get first-hand experience, and it's, it's, it's not just uh, adding the content or what you can find in an annual report or on a website, but really providing an experience. And this is something that this generation of students is looking for. Uh, the other thing too is, um, at least in our case, because our, our students are, are spread out, as I mentioned, all over the place, really leveraging technology, so leveraging video conference, leveraging Skype. The quality in most places has improved vastly over the last few years, so using this technology is something that our students are comfortable with, and it's something that companies need to be comfortable with as well. And I know that there are some challenges when it comes to looking at um, the quality or you know, how do you assess a candidate face-to-face -face versus virtually, but if you're looking to hire global talent, you have to really be able to leverage the technology. So even events like this, this is a good opportunity to network and to really uh, kind of take yourself outside of the traditional on-campus model. And then the last thing, these are, these are really trying to think more broadly. So when we think about talent, and we think about uh, where does the talent come from. Sometimes we're just going to certain places. Sorry, one minute. So we're just going to certain places to find the talent. And I think really it's, it's to think more broadly, to think what your needs are specifically, and think about what the language skills and what the cultural skills are that you're looking for. So thank you very much. Thank you. We should have time for one.